All right guys, so today we're gonna to be doing our active shooter seminar. This is gonna be geared towards somebody that is obviously actively shooting in a, in a business, a school, out in public. So if you guys really think about this, how often do you think this happens? Any guesses? A lot. A lot. More than we realize. More than you realize. Yeah, so there's a really cool uh, website that I'm gonna share with you guys today and just kind of briefly talk about this, but <clears throat> this is called gunviolencearchive.org. You guys can check this out on your own, but I'm gonna just share this with you. So the last active shooter that they have was on July 5th, um, 2018 in Brooklyn, New York. So an active shooter situation is considered when there's four people that are injured or more it doesn't necessarily have to be mean or mean that they were killed, but um, you know there's one. Actually, there are several on July 5th. It looks like there was five total on July 5th. Brooklyn, New York, Albany, New York, Los Angeles, California, Virginia Beach, and then um, Lima, Ohio, where uh, one was killed, five were injured. So with this, you know, we, we see in the news all the time where it's a school shooting, right? Because that's going to hit home with us. So the media is really going to focus on that. Uh, sometimes you might see the one that happened, I believe it was at YouTube or Google, one of the two that was there. There's sometimes that are at colleges, but they don't necessarily always talk about the gang violence one, the workplace one. So typically these are categorized in a few different things. It could be workplace violence. It could be special needs, like the one that was in Antioch or at the, uh, the Waffle House. You guys remember that one, hearing about that one? It was just basically naked in a trench coat and started shooting up that place, but had a mental issue background, okay? So, uh, like I said, uh, it could be gang violence, where a lot of these are gang violence, believe it or not, or it could be just a, a terrorist thing, or being bullied. That's kind of a new category, too, uh, for a lot of school shootings. But talking about, you know, how often these happen and, and whatnot, so... Believe it or not, you guys probably didn't hear about this, and I didn't even realize it either until I was taking a look at this today. Let me get to the page really fast for you. <clears throat> so on April 29th, 2018, in Wartburg, Tennessee. Uh, Wartburg, Tennessee is just right down there. Morgan mm -hmm. County. Yeah, Morgan County. It's maybe 18 miles away. There's an active shooter uh, situation there. Uh, four people were injured. So these happen, there's been, they've had them in Knoxville. Uh, there's, you know, Antioch, Tennessee. They, they happen, there's another one in Memphis. And this was all in April and May was the last time that Tennessee's really been hit with one. But these happen all the time, believe it or not. You just, you know, you can check this out. I mean, there's just hundreds and hundreds of these that are listed. You can view the reports and the incident report and why it happened. Sometimes it's a carjacking situation and they pull out a gun and start shooting. Um, gang violence drive by so it's, it's very interesting but you never know you can be caught in it at any time so the three things that we want to teach you guys when dealing with this is what we call run hide fight this is actually taught throughout the the world really of, of how to deal with it so the first element is running away the second one is, is hiding and the third one is fighting and we'll break them down as we guys as we continue but let me have everybody hop up <clears throat> So you guys do not have to run really fast right now, okay? We're just gonna start jogging nice and easy, going this direction. So we're just basically warming up right now, going this way. All right, make sure you're running. situation we react differently when you're startled you don't know when it's coming correct yeah international sign for yes all right so we, we don't know when it's going to happen and, and realistically somebody could drive by right now really angry at somebody else and fire we don't know when it's going to happen and, and we got to be cautious of that where's the safest place to go so in this situation you know we have two exits all right one back there is kind of locked you got to pop some stuff up and whatnot uh, then you can push it open or you got the front door. So when we're running, running to an exit in this situation, since I was the active shooter here, that'd be much better, correct? Yeah, so getting to an exit is a great thing to do when you're running. All right, because <clears throat> when I get there, if I hear the gun going off and I can get to the exit, who am I gonna call? 
pretty simple, right? 911, you guys can interact a little bit and talk, but we're gonna call 911, yes? yes? All right, so, you know, the reason I wanna do that is because I'd rather them come in. I wanna get as many people as I can out and save as, as many people. So like right now, if there's a active shooter situation happening out front, where'd be the safest way to go? Obviously to the back, call 911, let them know what's going on, let them handle that situation. We want professionals. Okay, so, <clears throat> all right. Um, so we're gonna do that again, but I want you guys, depending on where the shooter's at, is where's the safest way to run? All right, so go ahead and start running again. I was gonna rush, but I don't want my ass kicked by coach. <laughs> I can shoot her, I can shoot her, I can shoot her, I can shoot her, go, 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 go! All right, reset. <laughs> if I was going to run, fine. Like, I'd just attack you. I would run, fine. You know? It's just been like. Thanks for taking one for the team. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you come on back in, have a seat. <clears throat> so I'm not going to spend all day on running, but if we do have the opportunity to run, getting to the exit, getting as many people as we can to the exit, and saving as many people as we can. So depending on where you guys work, you should already have a game plan, right? I, I've heard Elena talk about this, that she has a game plan already to save as many people as she could in her workplace to get out of there. And that's stuff that you guys should think about, like where's my closest exit? If something was to happen, how can I get as many people out as possible? But you always have to have that backup plan and know, all right, so if we can't go this way because the shooter's over there and that was my main plan, where do I go now? And this is gonna start getting into hiding, all right? So hiding is not necessarily just going behind something and, and curling and just waiting to die. It's more so of actively hiding. So you have two things. You have concealment, you have cover. Concealment is something that can just hide you. For example, like hiding behind a bag. Because if I can not be seen for that split second and kind of see where the shooter's at and then they're turning around and then I continue my way to my exit, it's gonna keep me safe. Cover is something that's gonna be able to stop a bullet potentially. All right, brick walls, engine blocks, refrigerator, something like that, depending on the caliber of the bullet, but some stuff can, and I feel really awkward holding this while I'm talking to you guys, I'll put that back. <laughs> Just here holding it, you never know when it's gonna go off. But some stuff can protect us a little bit more than others. All right, so what we're gonna do now is <clears throat> when, we're, when we're hiding this time, I want you guys to travel to something that you think could briefly hide you for a second. I know, right? It's gonna be interesting. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see how you guys go. All right, because is it always gonna be, you know, a uh, thing with tons of rooms and stuff like that? No, but in this situation, going behind this wall would be your best bet, right? Yeah, I tell yeah. <laughs> or getting out there, ducking down, because I could still see all of you guys when you ran out the front door, and if I wanted to shoot, I could still shoot, correct? So when we're running, we want to commit to where we're going and get into the exit to the safest place possible. Worst. So we're going to just do that one more time. So hop up. Where's the neighbors like freak out on us? <laughs> You'll be all right. All right, ready? Begin jogging lightly or walking. Either one doesn't matter. Action shooter, go, 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 go. All right, time. Come back. All right, you're good, have a seat. <clears throat> so that's if we're in that running environment, trying to get to cover, trying to get concealment. Now we can also talk about, you know, zigzag running or from point A to point B going really, really quick. All depends on your situation and where you're at. Um, but we don't wanna to spend too much time on that. We wanna talk more about the fighting element. All right, which a lot of you guys naturally wanna do anyways. But <clears throat> if we think about this, you know, if we, if we try to run away, great. Because if we hear shots at a distance, it's a lot better to, to go. You know, if we're in a close environment like how we are right now, I know it's not natural for us to, to run when we're this close. Sometimes you may need to fight. But the next step is, is that hiding. So if we can, if we can, you know, if we're in an office building and we hear the shots going off, we, we'd have to open the door. Maybe they're on our level. Uh, maybe it's better to barricade that door to get ready to fight. So that's gonna be the first element of fighting to where maybe we already barricaded the door. Barricading the door can be a lot of different things, putting heavy stuff in front of it, door stops, ways of tying it, locking it, but you know, we'll, we'll save that for later. Um, 
now we're just going to discuss the fighting element. So thinking about, let's, let's put ourselves in an office situation or in a school situation, how we are right now, getting ready to fight. So if you guys were all in a room together, okay, and all of a sudden I kick down the door, if we were all clumped up in a corner, that's going to be easy for me to shoot everybody, correct? There's been studies on that to where they use balloons and uh, they clump them all up right there. Schools actually taught that for a little bit to where they would all go into a closet or something like that which realistically, that's kind of dangerous in a way. It's better to actually spread out, you know, and stay low and to try to get behind something, flip their desks over, maneuver them, something along those lines, and have something ready to throw or to fight or to use that will just give you an advantage, if that makes sense to you. Because now when I come in, if you guys are all spread out, I have to take my time to fire which is gonna give time to people to start to rush me. That makes sense to you guys? So you guys are kind of fanning out. So what I want you to do, we're gonna use the focus mitt so you guys run over there and get focus mitts real quick. Everybody will just have one. All right, so we're gonna imagine that the door is right here. So as I'm coming in, we're just gonna walk through this a couple times, then we'll go live. We'll have uh, you guys work as the attacker. We'll have some of you guys uh, you know, defending. But as I come through the door, we would want to fan out. So go ahead and kind of fan out a little bit. And we'd want to stay low. <clears throat> but now it's also better to, to think about it this way too. How close or how fast can you get here? You know, are you going to put the, the bigger people, you know, near the, the door that are going to be stronger, be able to hold them down, the faster people in the back so they have a better chance of running. So, I mean, you can get really nitty gritty and think and start to be tactical with this, but when you have a blunt object in your hand, I would really recommend that some of you guys start to throw that. And here's why. If I come in here, I bust the door. I just want all of you guys to pick up your object and you're going to throw it towards me. Ready? I come in and go. Okay, so naturally what people are going to do is they're going to want to block whatever thing is flying at their face. You guys were just throwing fire extinguishers at me, books, staplers, and you threw it as hard as you could, it's going to be a very intimidating thing. That makes sense? Now, yes. what does that buy you right there when you throw those objects Tons. first? Tons. Tons. All right, hopefully they're covering up like this. Now, what should you guys be doing in the meantime? Rush. Rushing, exactly. So, in law enforcement, there are COs and things like that, correctional officers, what they train is cell extractions. This is actually a very good way of, of doing this for the active shooter. One person should go for the gun. That's the first thing that you want to get control of. Because if somebody can get control of this gun and start to redirect it up, it's going to make you guys a lot safer. So they're going to try to get control and just point this up and hold it. Another person could go for an arm. Another person could go for another arm. Another person could go for the legs. Another person could go for the, face, the head and control the head. Another person could be striking. It all depends on how many people you have. You know, if you only have two people, well, one better go for the gun, the other one better be striking as hard as they possibly can until that, you know, they let go. If you have multiple people, then you can start to um, have certain people go for certain limbs. So does that make sense to you guys? Because it just gives you a better chance of survival, getting better control, because it's gonna be very difficult for that shooter to fight off six of you, and especially when they're being pulled apart and yanked and this is going all sorts of places and another person is hitting them in the face. It gives you such a, a greater chance of survival. All right, so what I want you guys to do, I'm gonna go in this room for a second. You guys kind of determine that. When I come out, I'm gonna change the angle. This is where the door is gonna be at. Go ahead and make your plan. All right, so people's gonna I would say probably the same time and probably one of the quickest here. I'm gonna have these people, so I'm gonna go try dragging down the ground. Okay. Legs. Somebody else be the attacker. Yeah, no. <laughs> Who's going? All right. There you go, David. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut down for you guys. Get your weapons again. Now you lost. We only have five people. Make your plan. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Three, oh. two, one, go. I don't 
somebody was bashing him in the face, kicking him in the groin, if somebody was actually hitting, it would have changed everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> would you agree? Yeah, it changes everything really quick because your mind's going to go from, ow, oh, that really hurts, I better start to protect that area, instead of, okay, I'm going to hold on to this gun for, for uh, dear life. So, you know, obviously you guys were respecting your partner, we weren't actually striking, but you could tell really quick how difficult it becomes when you're just being swarmed. And as the shooter, you know, they probably aren't expecting that right away. So the moment they kick in the door, yes, they could be nervous because it could be in the back of their mind, but their intentions are kill, kill, kill. And when all of a sudden that fight comes in, they're going to be starved. Is that always the case? No. But we, we have a greater chance of survival of doing that right there and fighting. And there's a great chance that somebody could get shot. There really is. Multiple people could get shot in that situation, but it's so much better to keep moving forward. You'd be shocked of how much damage you can actually take and then keep moving forward. All right, yes, are there shots that could be one and done and kill you? Of course. But if we're being shot in the arm or shot in the leg, a lot of times when your adrenaline's pumping, you won't even realize it until the situation's over and you're like, man, I'm so sweaty. And you're like, oh, that's blood. Oh, I got shot. And then all of a sudden you're freaking out. So have that mentality of life or death. And that's really what it boils down to. Because if you stayed when somebody comes in that room and you're just hiding, well, it could be pretty easy for them to see you start firing. When they come through that door and you fight, total different story. So that's if we're barricaded in a room. Now we're going to talk about being more so in the open. All right. If they're in an open area like this, I highly don't want to recommend you guys charging at them if you're at a great distance. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're from where I am to you, you, you better be very quick, very sneaky, dropping your level, changing your level. You have a high percentage chance of getting shot. From the side, your chances increase a little bit of not being shot. From the back, that is your best chance of survival to disarm this person and to fight. So this is more so going to be individual stuff that we're talking about right now. We're going to start with the handgun first, and then we'll go back to the long gun. So I'll borrow Jesse here. Let's imagine that he's the attacker. So coming from the side or back is what we're going to be talking about. I don't want to encourage you guys to go from the front. It's a lot safer to go from the back. So I'm actually going to be crouching down slightly, and then that's when I'm going to make my move. I'm coming in here. Okay, gun's on now. 
But what's happening here, when I come down really low, it's going to be hard for him to see me, see me in his peripheral vision. It's also going to be if he turns, I'm low. He has to change the angle of where that firearm is. That makes sense to you guys? It buys me a little bit of time. It gets me safer. So I, I'm going to be crouched down. As I'm coming in, I'm going to be bringing both hands towards the weapon. Notice I'm hooking on the wrist and I'm going to be sending my thumb up so that way I have control of both sides of the gun. I want my palms to be together. That way I have control of the firearm, control of his wrist from both angles. So I'm kind of pinching together. Because now if he does any type of gun retention, I'm going to have control here. If I just put one hand on it and I had maybe my hand on the same side, he's going to be able to break free. But since I have both limbs facing each other, now if he was to break this grip, at least I have my hand there and I can readjust and stop. So I have a much tighter grip to him. This is what I want. The next step, let's put your finger in the trigger real quick. Just hold one hand. What's happening here is I'm punching towards him. So I'm going away from all the limbs and his finger. So this becomes a very easy break. And especially when I use my whole body and I'm coming in and I'm punching that towards him. Striking, having the firearm ready to go if it need be. Let's say within the left hand though, fingers in the trigger. And let's say he had okay. the second hand on. So if I now come in, because maybe for whatever reason I thought he was right hand shooter and I'm coming to this side, I choose this side because I'm more dominant with this hand. And you want your more dominant hand on the barrel of the gun anyways. But when I come in now, it doesn't matter because when I punch in, look at what's happening to that finger. So I'm punching as hard as I possibly can and then I'll rip it out. Same thing applies here. I punch as hard as I can and then I rip it out. So the gun's going to do one of two things. It's either going to turn this direction or it's going to turn this direction. We're always ripping out. This is going to cause a lot more pain and maybe a little bit uh, harder for them or harder for you when you're trying to take it away. But you got to understand this happens so fast and they're not expecting it. So one more time, right or left. I'm coming in low. I don't want to reach over the top because uh, go ahead and um, say when you see me, okay? So when I'm here, now, okay, versus here, now. You guys see the difference there? Because this is going to be exposed to him. This isn't. This is going to be very difficult to see because his arms are, are my concealment. I'm going to be hiding underneath him. All right. Yes. Right, quick question. Okay. So now, here, hold it back up, Justin. Say your fingers in the trigger mm -hmm. on this hand. Now, what happens? Because it's going to discharge usually if he's Correct. holding it. What happens yes. there? What's the what's the change? So, <clears throat> if I come in and this gun discharges. All right. Yes, we always slightly want to go up. Now, the slide would go back. If I have a tight enough grip, the next round isn't necessarily going to, to be able to be chambered correctly. So as I'm breaking, could it go off? Of course. And then I'm, uh, and then I'm ripping it free. That's your question? Yeah, I was just making sure, like, is there a certain way or what, what to look for? Oh, I mean... I know you want to rip it away from the finger so it don't put pressure on the trigger. Yeah. But, there, don't but work that way. There, there's one thing to where you, you got to understand the heat of the moment, active shooter situation. I got to do what I got to do. And, and realistically, if he's there already firing, for me to evaluate, okay, it looks like right hand, and then I go, I may not have that luxury. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot better to use your dominant side because you're going to be a lot stronger when you punch and in, and that's the, what you want. Grip the chamber tight. and uh, Yeah, so when slide. I come here, I'm getting to that side, and I'm going as hard as I possibly can. And then I'm striking. Now from this point, the next step after we, we tap and rack, if I have this on him, could I shoot him? Yes. It all depends on the situation. Yes, yes. Being able to justify In that situation. All right. So what if he doesn't have another gun and he's on the floor bleeding and curled up like a little girl? Then you no. him to the police. <laughs> all right. So yeah, that's a situation. Just lay down and if he lays down or if I'm giving commands, lay down, lay down. It, it's as much as I want to shoot him for what he's just in this, uh, it, it, I can't justify that. If he went to reach for another gun or another thing, of course, I could justify that all day long. Or even if he was making movements, uh, I could easily justify that. So, <clears throat> that's one thing. Now, really quick, go ahead and imagine you're shooting. Let's play this role. 
Let's say I have a firearm. Can I shoot him in the back? Yes. Yeah. All right, it's called reasonable person. Here, bang, bang. All right, I can shoot him. So even if I was in front of him, the side of him, if he's actively shooting, you know, there's uh, that reasonable person. There's also the, the basic self-defense laws to where you can save people, the third person law to where I can, act, if he's actively shooting, yes, I can shoot and fire and save him. So that, that saves a lot of trouble. But right now we're just imagining that there's nothing and we're doing that motion. So questions on this motion? All right, let's get a partner, let's try it. So handguns first, but pass them out. All right, and go. Is it going, boy? You guys will just be facing the wall, shooting the wall. Or you can shoot another group. I just this up. Actually, one over here. Go over that part. Give me this gun. You two can work together. There you go. All right. Go that way. And begin. Coming in. Yeah, I you want to you want to you to you to you to Jesse, if you hit me in the face like you did actually, I will hit you no. back. <laughs> If we go down, I mean, if it's going down fast, that could work too. It just all yeah, depends. It <laughs> so I, I prefer just kind of rolling it up and over. That's okay. my preference. Just for style. Yeah. Well, really, the, the main thing is getting the gun to them as fast as you can. Okay. Yeah. They're already firing, so. Correct. Bang. Good. Then we'll just get ready to shoot. After you're done, train your body to go here, pack, rack ready to shoot, and create a little bit of space between you and the shooter. Once I've done this, yep. put it in your dominant hand. Yep, tap. tap. So we're going to tap first, which is just making sure the magazine's still in there. Here. Yep. Then we're going to go four fingers on the side here, pull it and then we're creating space, firearms on it. And then you would give commands okay. at that point. Tap, tap, back, yep. tap, and rack, yep. Now we're going to move on to a long gun, dealing with a long gun. I say long gun, it's a very generic term, could be used to describe a lot of different uh, types, of, uh, types of rifles, shotguns, things like that. So, Jesse, can I borrow you again? So the handgun is actually a lot harder to deal with when you're disarming them because you have such a small barrel, uh, especially if they're like a snub nose revolver, it's very hard to get control of that gun. When you're dealing with a long gun, and once again, I'm just using that term just to describe all sorts of long guns, this is actually easier to get control of. It's gonna be slightly just a little bit more challenging on our takeaway, just because it becomes a leverage game then. That makes sense to you guys? So, on this one from here, we're gonna actually have to go over the top. Now, the reason we have to go over the top is to get leverage, all right? And then I'm gonna have one hand up, one hand down, very similar to how we were dealing with the handgun. And my redirection and everything's gonna be almost identical. But I'm gonna be coming in here, controlling. I'm gonna move this way just really quick. So this is where we're gonna be at. 
But the next step, if you notice where his hands are compared to my hands are, I have the ends. And that's what I want. So I'm gonna be punching this down as this hand is going towards his face. Striking, striking, striking. And I'm just driving that into him over and over again. So think about if his finger was in the trigger and I'm here striking, 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 and then I'm ripping out. So I'm causing a lot of pain to that trigger finger to try to force him to wanna to move it out of the way for one. If not, just imagine that being mangled over and over again. All right, with that trigger guard. So that's fine, because the shot still be going off? Of course it could. But where's this gun at now? When the shots are going off? It's up in the air. So I'm having it in the air. So if, the, if he keeps pulling the trigger, that's fine. But this is going into his face over and over and over again. When I feel like I'm starting to loosen up, I'm then gonna be ripping that down. Okay, coming through. Now I have it. All right, so one more time. This is slightly different. Could, if I, if I come underneath and get control of his wrist, well, when we're playing the leverage game, he's most likely gonna win when we're talking about a long gun here. So it's better to put our hand towards the butt of the gun. From here, driving down, striking. And both hands are working, don't just depend on one. One is pushing down towards the end of the gun, and the other one is punching towards his face, striking, 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 ripping down. And it's fine. And the firearm's on them. Okay, so questions on that one? So we're just imagining now that this part is gonna be his arm instead. Okay, questions? All right, let's work it. There you go. There you go. There you go. And begin. So one hand will go here. Yes, exactly. Then imagine you're just throwing across the face. And then rip it down. There you go. Yep. And then now you're the attacker. No, it's fine. You go to that side if they're left handed. Going in. Controlling. Now start to strike. And then rip down. There you go. That would be a little more challenging <laughs> facing the lefty. It would, yes, but. Yeah, 
there's more uh, control there. people screaming, chaos, all sorts of muzzle or muffling noises and things like that. So a lot of crazy noises in this. Uh, everyone's going to be on the floor somewhere. You guys can be seated down. You can be standing around. You guys can hold the, the focus mitts as so there's something that you have in your everyday life, cell phone, purse, briefcase, whatever it is. Um, some of you guys, like I said, will be sitting down talking. Some of you guys can just be off to the side, however you want to do it. I don't care where you guys go. Everyone's going to have their eyes closed. I'm going to give the gun to one person. All right, we're going to be using the long gun. And <clears throat> what's going to happen when as soon as I hear, or as soon as I push play, that's when the drill's going to go live. You guys react however you need to react. You do whatever you do. Make sense? These are not in play, though. <laughs> These are all off. All right, hold on. Let me make that real clear. You got a donor cut so. in the face. <laughs> yeah, I'm not All right. Obviously, you know, yes, we are going live and having that intensity and aggression, but if you're going to grab a chair, please don't smack it over our partner's faces today. Uh, be respectful. Okay, you guys can take the pads and kind of hit them, but, you know, intense, do what you got to do. Active shooter, play the role. All right, you can scream and yell uh, if you guys are the shooter. How right. do you know? So, you just, uh, shot, shot, shot. Or however you want to do it. Yeah, that's fine. So, just scream whatever you want to scream if you guys are the shooter. Move around, try to shoot whoever you want. You should have got another Nerf gun. All right, do what? You should have got another Nerf gun. I know, right? Should have got another Nerf gun. So for you guys at home, Nerf guns are a great way of doing this too. Uh, that way you can keep everybody safe. The person could just be firing Nerf guns. Only thing is when it's plastic, it's most likely going to break. So keep that in mind. But all right, so go ahead and spread out. I'm going to shut the lights off. Get the music going here in a second. Remember, eyes closed. Oh, something. <laughs> 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 
to pick up take you with it. <laughs> you probably would have. <laughs> I'd use the table. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, eyes closed. Amplify this by using Nerf guns. If you want to get more realistic, you can use airsoft. Make sure you guys have safety protection or eye protection, if you will. Uh, one other thing that I want to address: when we gave somebody a gun, a handgun, she played the role as a the concealed carry uh, citizen. But what happened? Confusion. Do what? Some confusion. There was some confusion. What'd you do? I took her weapon. <laughs> you took her. You started attacking her. And, <laughs> I right? Thought Yeah, and, and that can happen. And in real life, yeah, if I go pow, 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 we could have shot him and killed him, and it could have been over, but there still could be that confusion, and maybe somebody attacks the person with the handgun. So having a handgun can end stuff really, really quick, especially if you're carrying, but you, you got to be careful of that because if, let's say I'm in the office back here, and the shots are over here, and all of a sudden the police are coming in, and I'm going to search for what's ever going on, guess who's going to get shot? Yeah. SWAT teams that are going in there and whatnot, they're just shoot to kill. That's their mentality. Like they're going to do whatever it takes to, to disarm them as fast as they can. And I don't want to be caught in that. So if I have a gun, you know, you, you got to be very, very careful. And have you seen the video of the robbery in Texas where the guy goes in, armed robbery, and six people in the store are all concealed carriers and they all shoot him? Yeah. I six believe it. <laughs> I believe it. So it, it just, you know, you got to be cautious of that too. Be very, very careful and, you know, under a stressful situation and people running, they, they could easily mistaken you for the active shooter as well. And what if somebody else is carrying and you get shot? So if you do have a firearm, be very, you know, think about that. Be cautious of how you're going to handle that situation and whatnot. But questions on anything we did? So run. Oh yeah, hold on one second. So run, get out of there, do what you need to do, call in on one. All right, and get as many people as you can. Number two is hiding, whether that's just hiding on your way out of there uh, or barricading yourself in a room and getting low, getting behind something solid that can protect you just in case they shoot through the walls or door. And lastly is fighting, the fighting of uh, multiple people versus just by yourself. But it changes even when we do this stressful situation when multiple people fight, yes? And tables are involved and chairs and 
how many of you guys were the shooter at one point? It's, it's not fun when things are being thrown at you like that, is it? <laughs> no. no. So what was your question? Well, they were fighting him on the ground. Mm-hmm. And they basically used to death the shooting because they couldn't get the weapon out of the state. Is that considered legal? <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. I mean, you could justify that. If they're still fighting and, and they're right. not, They couldn't get you know. the gun out of me, so I basically went behind dead shot. And, and that, hey, you, you know, you were just trying to disarm them and gun goes off. If you can justify it, that's the most important thing. Just be cautious. Yeah, be them. cautious, though, of yeah. when you do something like that. <laughs> yeah, of, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just be cautious of that, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But any other questions? No. No. All right, guys, hop up. We'll bow out real quick. Good job. And courtesy oh, bow, guys. Uh, good job. It worked. You got to bend down. I know, right? <laughs> good job. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Next time I just take you outside, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got not and not.